Step 7. Build a Million Dollar Brand. Remember Dave Asprey's fancy coffee? When Dave launched his company, Bulletproof 360, in 2013, it quickly became famous for his recommended morning brew, coffee, blended with butter and MCT oil. It was only natural for Dave to launch his own coffee brand of organic, upgraded, coffee as his first product. He followed up with his own line of butter and MCT oil, which helped him to establish a steady stream of revenue and raving fans. Had he wanted to have a small, profitable coffee company, he could have stopped there. But Dave desired to be more than a coffee company, he had his sights set on becoming the go-to source for upgraded performance. Over the next few years, Dave would release everything from supplements, to sleep induction mats, to a whole body vibe, to a $15,000 five-day retreat. Of course, it would have been impossible for Bulletproof to do this right out of the gate. They had to crawl before they could run. But with a raving fan base that supports all his products, Bulletproof has the ability to release whatever products Dave is inspired to create. Just like Bulletproof, your brand will be defined by the products that you release. Your first product was your gateway, it made it easy for your audience to start their journey, and to choose you as their guide. But to create a real brand, your follow-up products must lead the customer to the next stage of their journey. These follow-up products will ultimately define what your company becomes, they will also lead you to cross your first million. Stage 3, the gold when our first sheer strength product hit 25 sales a day, Matt and I were beside ourselves. It was a major milestone. At the same time, we knew it was just the beginning. If we were going to build a million dollar business, our math told us that, at our price point, we would have to sell four products at 25 sales a day to get there. After hitting 25 sales each day consistently, our product leveled off. You're always going to hit a plateau. Luckily, that plateau is a milestone itself, that's when you'll know it's time to release your second product. After we released product 2, sales started to climb quickly, much faster than they did with the first product because we already had a built-in audience of customers willing to try our second product. In fact, our second product started out selling product 1 within just a few weeks. Then something weird happened. Once the second product hit 25 sales a day, The first one jumped up from its plateau and began doing 50 sales a day. Sales that were previously flat had now doubled. The second product actually bumped up the first product. Previously, we had feared that the two products might take sales away from one another, but they were actually feeding one another. Why did this happen? There were a couple factors at play. First, we had repeat customers coming back for more and buying additional product. Second, customers started buying them together as a bundle. They saw that we offered two products, so they just bought both. There was a network effect, a sort of natural referral process, happening. And finally, some people had followed us during launch but had not purchased, they were following our journey, and when they saw us release more products, they joined our fold by placing orders. Beyond that, two products started to juice up Amazon's internal marketing machine. The algorithm was working for us, introducing people who were interested in one of our products to the other one. Potential buyers would see, these two products are frequently bought together, and, customers who saw this also saw this. We thought we had hit the peak at 25 sales a day, we thought that we were already at the top of the market. We were wrong. That product quickly bumped to 50 sales per day, and then more. By the time we sold the company, that same product was doing more than 300 sales a day. This is the snowball effect. Product 2's launch is boosted by the success of product number 1 but then sales from product 2 also bounce back and boost the first product as well. Back and forth, back and forth, snowballing into more sales and greater profits. That's why this stage of the process is the gold. It's when your hard work finally starts to pay off. It's when sales start to increase exponentially, and every product you release creates a multiplier effect. New customers start to find you organically, and the million is so close that you can smell it. You have proven that you can take a product to 25 sales per day, and now you need to do it a few more times. Remember the formula, 3 to 5 products at 25 sales per day is a million dollar business. Your task is simple, release more products as quickly as you can comfortably handle, without getting distracted. From 1 to 1 to 1 to many my mentor, Travis, once told me something that most people don't realize, everything you're doing in business is really just audience building. When you release that first product, you're building an audience of customers. 
You have to do all the things we previously talked about build relationships, reach out to influencers, and kill them with kindness until they voluntarily give you feedback and reviews. When you release the second product, your audience is already primed and responsive, and they will reward you. They bought from you once, and they are likely to do so again. At this point, your systems start to break because you are the systems. Even the most well intentioned business owners may have trouble keeping up with the number of customer inquiries, the comments, and the number of customers coming in the door. That forces you to make some changes. You want to continue doing all that outreach you were doing pre launch and continue to build up your consumer base. But now, instead of talking to people one to one, you're talking to many people at the same time. You're engaging with an audience and still building those same connections, but now you're doing it at scale. You're talking to your audience as a whole rather than to each person individually. In addition, you now have a network of fans that can help you with promotion. If you haven't already, Start taking screenshots of positive reviews and sharing them with your audience, or get your customers to do video testimonials and run them as ads on Facebook. Every customer testimonial can be used as content for your audience, and every post of someone holding your product or making a video review can become an ad or a social media post. Your customers are creating social proof on your behalf, rather than you having to create it all from scratch. Using it at scale is powerful. Every influencer that you previously connected with is watching your growth. If your first launch went well, and you're getting positive reviews, then it validates other people's decision to take a chance on you. Take advantage of these networks. People are highly influenced by others, so continue to share positive reviews, glowing emails, and every ounce of publicity you receive. All this will feed the pre launch machine to set up your second product to be a hit. Remember, The more external traffic and sales you can send to Amazon, Kickstarter, Walmart, Shopify, or wherever else you are taking orders, the more that those big machines reward you. It is more important than ever to continue to document the build out of your company, talk about the decisions that you make as a team, and keep the attention of your followers and customers. Developing product number two, choosing what to roll out for your second product should be an easy decision, but many people screw it up. The biggest mistake people make is trying to pursue a second niche market with their next product. Your second product is always the answer to this question What's the next thing that my first customer would want to buy? To know this, we go back to the group of products your customer already buys. If you don't know what your customers want next, then you entered the wrong business, or you got so wrapped up in your first launch that you lost sight of the brand. That's why it was so important to identify the three to five products that your ideal person might want to buy. If you've been doing the work, you already have a list from which to choose. The order of products naturally flowed within my yoga business. Our gateway product was a yoga mat. What's the next thing they would want to buy? We put out a yoga towel. We followed that with a yoga block, then a foam roller. We could have kept going, but parties interested in acquiring us came knocking on our door, and we sold the company. Many people are tempted to follow up their first product with add ons, additional colors, or new sizes. That is fine, but it's not a second product. Accessories are not new products, they create incremental gains at best. It's important not to waste a good product launch by releasing a 1A version of your first product. Your second product should create as much buzz as the first, or you won't get the multiplier effect that can double your company's sales. Think of it this way your customer is on a journey. They are the hero in their decision to lose weight, or become an author, or be more eco conscious. Your job is to make it easier for them to overcome the challenges they will have along the way. Supplemental products don't help them overcome their challenges, they just help them consume your first product more. Consider a laptop. When you buy one, you have the option to purchase all sorts of accessories, like a case or a keyboard cover. They are supplementary products, not new concepts. Apple would have a hard time being a trillion dollar company if they only sold one product with add ons. Selling incremental changes doesn't get people lining up at the door, waiting for your next product to go live. What kind of company are you? Your second product can define the type of company you will be for the next year. Recall that Onnit set out to be more than a brain supplement company, and Bulletproof more than a coffee company. As a result, both had to change their product lineups as quickly as possible. If you get stuck releasing products that are too similar to your first product, you might get pigeonholed. You might plateau and end up being smaller than you could be. 
That's why it's important now to decide what type of company you want to be. If you did your job at the very start, and you understand your customer, then this part should be easy. Your company exists to help your ideal person along his or her journey, after all. My friends Catherine and Alan had tremendous success when they released their best self journal. It took off like a lightning bolt, selling millions of dollars worth of product. But when it was time to come up with a second product, they struggled. How do you follow up a first ever at bat home run? They were already selling inserts and cases for their journals, note, supplemental products, but they didn't have an idea for a killer second product to release. One day, while we were chatting, I asked a simple question of them What kind of business do you want to be? If they were a journaling company, then their next products would be simple, more journals, fancy pens, and, well, that would be about it. But I had a hunch that they wanted to be something different. After talking for a while, they hit on the answer it's not about journaling, it's about productivity. That realization opened up a whole new realm of ideas. Instead of just selling journals, their job was to develop products that help their customers become more productive. Shortly after, they released their second product, called Tempo, the world's first adjustable hourglass, designed to help you organize your time and stay focused, and it happens to be a beautiful object to look at, too. It's a tool that fits in perfectly with Best Self Co.'s overarching brand concept and aesthetic. That made them more than a journal company. Second product pitfalls It's rare for a second product to hurt you, but I have seen entrepreneurs release new products that, for whatever reason, never really took off. If you've done the work to build an audience, it's extremely rare to have this happen on a first product. But it could happen on a second product if it doesn't live up to expectations. Or, if your second product doesn't bring your customer further along their journey, then they're unlikely to line up as eagerly as they did for your first product. Many times when entrepreneurs launch their first product, they're still trying to find their voice as a business. Sometimes that voice and identity changes. It's not uncommon for people to be targeting one audience and find that the raving fans are a different demographic than they expected, which happens when they either don't know their audience or their interests change. I cannot count the number of entrepreneurs who had a successful first product, only to realize they had no passion for the audience they targeted. When that happens, go back to redefining your ideal person. One of my students, Jonathan, came to me when he was selling about a million dollars per year in makeup bags. He had done something extremely special, created fantastic products that people absolutely loved and crossed a million dollars in sales. He was also miserable. Jonathan joined the back room, which is my small group of mentoring students, some of whom I personally invest in. As a result, we spent many hours talking about his business and what he wanted to accomplish. He had no interest in selling more makeup bags. His plan was to grow the company a little bit more, sell it, and move on. But I noticed something interesting about Jonathan he lit up like a Christmas tree when he talked about new ideas. He came to life when he talked about the suitcase he wanted to launch or the journals that he wanted to create to help people achieve their goals. He even enjoyed talking about his ideas for creating and selling closet organizers. One day, I found the thread in his thinking when I asked him, Jonathan, what gets you excited about all these new products? He sighed. I guess, he said, that I just want to help people declutter their chaotic brains. That was it. It wasn't about makeup bags or suitcases, it wasn't about the product at all. His brand was about the result that his products created, decluttering his customers' chaotic brains. Jonathan's brilliant design was the thing people loved about his makeup bags. The bags had a special place for everything. And the suitcases he had been designing made it simple for you to remember to pack everything. They had a special place for each item, which made it easy to pack for your next trip. The closet organizers he had been sketching followed the same idea. It was like each product took just a little bit of your crazy neuroticism and put it into a nicely organized place. I got excited as I realized his target customer wasn't just women with messy purses, but also me. I would love to have a suitcase that was so well organized that it made my life just a little bit simpler. If Jonathan had kept releasing more and more makeup bags, he would have always been a makeup bag company. But once he identified what he wanted his company to be, he realized he had something more, his brand existed to organize the chaotic world. That set off a tidal wave of product ideas. When you identify exactly what you want your company to be about, then your job becomes simply developing the products that make it easy for your customers to carry out their journeys. 
You may not hit a home run every time, but each product will serve a purpose within your brand. Deciding what to sell next is important, but it's even more important to decide when to release it. It's common to release products too quickly, without giving the customer time to breathe. Speaking on stage is one of my favorite things to do, and I love to do Q and A after a live talk. Once, during the Q and A session at SellerCon, a conference for Amazon sellers, one attendee asked, I'm launching 10 products right now. What would be your suggestion on how to do that without overwhelming my audience? Simple, I said. You don't. You can't. Your audience will absolutely be overwhelmed. Don't do that. Sell one at a time. He pushed against me, but I stood firm. Don't launch 10 products at the same time. Launch one. You will make more money and maintain more momentum. To get the snowball going, you need to reach 25 sales a day, and it's difficult to do that when you're watching and pushing 10 products. It's also just poor optics. 10 products on Amazon with only a handful of reviews each isn't as powerful or trustworthy as one product with lots of glowing reviews. Do one thing extremely well, and then do it again. Competition and unique value I consult with a lot of businesses that have released a successful first product but don't know what to do next. This is often because instead of trying to serve their customer base, they are getting hung up on analytics and surface level metrics. When Matt and I launched Sheer Strength, there were no product research tools that estimated how much money a product would make on Amazon. I believe this ignorance was a strategic advantage for us. I cannot tell you how many times an entrepreneur had a successful first product but then struggled to act on releasing the second product because the data scared them. Don't fall into the trap of making decisions based on volume, or trying to get a piece of someone else's action, instead, do what is best for your own business and your customers. There are enough slices of the pie for everyone. You don't need to dominate a market, you just need to get each product to at least 25 sales a day. And remember, always default to serving the customer, and let the numbers fall where they fall. When I asked Tom Bilyeu, the founder of Quest Nutrition, about competition, he shared a unique perspective. Quest bars were the first of their kind to market, and their product was an immediate hit. But within a few years, there were so many other, paleo, protein bars on the market that it was hard to keep them all straight. Tom told me that when you bring a new product to market you have about 18 months before people start copying you. He said to enjoy that honeymoon phase, but never forget that they're coming for you. The solution is to constantly be innovating and staying one step ahead. In many cases, competition can actually benefit your brand by building awareness. When yoga was just a small niche a few decades ago, more brands on the scene benefited everybody because it created awareness of the practice and got more people interested. If Dr. Oz came out with a supplement I already sold, I would be pumped. He would bring in a huge audience of people already primed to see the value of that product. A lot of them might buy it from him, but some of them would buy mine. Keep in mind that the company that you think you're competing with may end up acquiring you. Do your thing, and let them do theirs. If other people invade your space, keep innovating and keep serving your customers. At the same time, be open to collaboration or competition, cooperative competition. After all, you're both spreading the same message. Tom put it well, our company mission isn't to make protein bars, he said. Our mission is to end metabolic disease. And if another company comes along that does it better than us, we would support them. A few brands that I advise have similar, but not duplicate, products in the same space. They will often cross-promote their non-competing products to each other's audiences. Their audiences benefit, and both companies see a boost in sales. Customers will switch products, but they don't often switch brands. A brand is just outsourced trust. It's an expensive risk to try something new, which is why it's so hard to get a business off the ground. Once you build that trust and validation, people will continue to buy from you. Someone else promoting awareness about your products only helps your brand. Stay in your lane, and don't let their decisions determine where you go as a company. The big picture brands do well when one product puts them on the map, and its success leads to future purchases. Most of the brands that we love have one flagship product, and it paves the way for future products. People come to you for your best self journal, your bulletproof coffee, or your quest bars. While they're looking around at your brand, they end up buying the other stuff you sell. This is partially why audience is so important, the ability to put firepower behind each product launch is invaluable. However, your hero product 
the flagship your brand becomes known for, may not be the first product you release, or even the second. I've seen examples in which the first product did fine, the second did fine, but the third just took off. It's impossible to know which product will most resonate. Always keep in mind your central goal, to build a million dollar business in one year. To do this, you need three to five products, each earning 25 sales a day, at a $30 price point. That's it. Your only goal after launch is to get to 25 sales a day, which unlocks the next product, which then unlocks the next. Keep focusing on that momentum, and the snowball will roll all the way down the hill. Entrepreneur Spotlight Paul Miller Paul Miller started his business, Cozy Phones, from absolutely zero. A previous business failure had left him completely broke, and he was healing from a major physical injury. In a moment of desperation, Paul threw his hat at one more business attempt. Four years in, Cozy Phones did $6 million in sales. Honestly, your videos changed my life, Paul told me recently. I never would have started without that blueprint, and I never would have made it to where I am now. Years ago, Paul had used sleeping headphones, a soft headband, with headphone speakers inside. He used them to listen to podcasts when he couldn't sleep, one of those podcasts was mine. But the headphones weren't well made and often broke. As he was looking for new ones one day, an idea came to him, I could make these better myself. He found generic sleeping headphones and ordered a small batch of them. Then he set to work tweaking the product, making the sound quality better, adding more colors and patterns, and improving the build quality. He put the product up on Amazon, and it took off. But this wasn't the real genesis of Cozy Phones, at least not where revenue is concerned. The biggest inspiration for his product came while Paul was doing a product photo shoot. The photographer put his headphones on her little 10-year-old. That was my moment of revelation, Paul said. I thought, wow, this could be good for kids. They're comfortable, kids can lay down with them, they stay in place, and they're great for travel. But I knew kids would want more than just the typical colors. I thought of what my kids would want, and the wheels really started turning. His daughter helped him create his first design, a green frog version of Cozy Phones. It took off even faster than the original product he'd put on Amazon. Little kids don't like earbuds or big, bulky headphones, he said. In addition to being comfortable, Cozy Phones are volume limited, so it's safe for their ears. Kids loved them, and parents loved them, too. Discovering this niche market made all the difference, and Paul ran with it, creating a bunch of animal themes, unicorns, bunnies, foxes, and cats. Then, out of nowhere, Paul's product took off with an audience he'd never expected. Cozy phones were a hit with kids with autism and sensory processing disorder, SPD. At the time, Paul didn't even know about SPD. When he realized the benefit, he started joining Facebook groups for autism and SPD and offering free samples. He asked families to use his product with their kids and give him feedback. The thanks from the parents of those kids felt incredible, Paul said. I felt like I wasn't just selling stuff. I was helping families. Cozy Phones still sells a lot of adult sleep headphones and continues to expand this category as well with Bluetooth in different styles and colors. But expanding into the child audience made all the difference. The next big step was moving into licensing. Paul now works with Nickelodeon. Cozy Phones makes exclusive character headband headphones for Paw Patrol, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and other franchises. The worst obstacle? Copycats, he said. From day one, they were there. A hundred popped up overnight selling my exact product. As a result, he has a patent pending on Cozy Phones. When he gets his patent issued, he plans to deal with the competitors. Right now, he is constantly innovating, always trying to make it a little bit better than the other person's. He believes it's critical to get out of your tunnel vision of how a product could be effective. I had no idea where my product was going to hit, and I was really surprised by the ways people used their cozy phones. I never would have imagined the audiences I'd reach, Paul said. He advises trying to think outside of the box in terms of audience for the product. Can you modify the product and make it work for different groups? For example, he's recently created a sweat wicking cozy phones headband for runners. Paul scaled up quickly, and he plans to keep scaling with the licensing relationships he's building. I thought in the beginning being a million dollar business would be amazing, he said. 
I believed it was possible, but I never dreamed that within three years I'd do over four and a half million, while still working from home.